guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Thank you for joining me. Today's going to be a great video because I have the Lava Loon God back on the channel. It's Bochum, this time not on voice though. I want to do something a little bit different. This might be a long video, so don't be intimidated. I don't know how long it is, but don't be intimidated by it, guys, because, oh, he's in a match right now, so we'll go ahead and join this one. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, hopefully Bochum can push to 7,000 trophies. I'm recording this on Sunday evening right before the season ends. I'll probably end up uploading it on Monday so happy Monday guys if you're watching or whenever you're watching so what I want to do again with the time on this video is I'm trying something new here on the live ladder pushing series and I'm gonna just include timestamps against every single matchup that way you guys if you have trouble with one specific matchup that will all be listed and you're not forced to watch the entire video although I would recommend it because Bochum is so so good so if you have the time by all means watch the video uh, but if you don't that that will be there for you as well uh, on top of the deck links as as always so here we go we're going against the first match here and you can see the battle deck guys right below me and it's a 4.0 elixir deck it's a little bit heavier than traditional lava loon but we do have the e-drag that's coming in handy right off the bat here against that inferno dragon and we send in the balloon that's going to be trouble defending here for criminal let's see what he can come up with here arrows actually will do the trick against those puffs zap comes down to reset that inferno dragon fireball comes down from criminal but we do get one hit in the death damage onto that left tower meanwhile he doesn't really walk away with any much damage at all about 500 i say uh on our left tower so again the e-drag guys i know a lot of you guys either don't have them leveled up or unlocked so, substitutions, right? So, for E-Drag, definitely can sub in Baby Dragon, Inferno Dragon, or the more traditional sub in this deck would be Minions. So, that would be your substitutions for E-Drag. Uh, and for Guards, in case you don't have them leveled up because they are an epic card, you can just go ahead and sub in Goblin Gang there. So, that's basically the substitutions that you, not, that you guys need to be aware of here. And we have a Baby Dragon, a little bit of a Baby Dragon minor push here by Criminal. We're going to go ahead and retarget that Baby Dragon, then dispose of him, thanks to that E-Drag. Now, Bochum loves E-Drag in this deck. He says it's a perfect complementary card to Lava Loon, and he's really happy they added it. And look at it against the Skarmie right here, guys. It's surprisingly one thing that we didn't really see coming, at least I didn't, even while I was playing it on the dev build. I didn't really recognize early on how good E-Drag is against Swarm cards. It's really incredible. You don't really need... We don't have much splash damage in this deck. I mean, look at the deck, guys. We have no Baby Dragon. We have nothing... We, we have the Fireball and the E-Drag, basically, right? We have Zap, of course, as well. But we're really lacking any splash defense. It's because of the Inferno Dragon. He's so surprisingly good against Splash. And speaking of good, we get the Balloon to the left tower. That's going to take it down with the death damage. And now all we have to do is defend here. It's going to be tough, though. We have a Mind and uh, all those pups onto the tower. He zaps them away. Fireball comes down. Going to take care of that mega minion. And now we have to respond to the Inferno Dragon. We do so with a Tombstone. Baby Dragon is ready there. Good heads up play by Criminal. Supporting with the Baby Dragon immediately. Our Inferno, our Electro Dragon, excuse me, is doing good work there. But we're still going to lose the tower with about three, four seconds left. Now it's going to be a anybody's game, really. Bochum has a little bit of a deficit here. Uh, about three, four hundred damage less on his tower. But as a signature Bochum play here is just dropping that Lava Hound right there in the pocket, especially going against an opposing Lava Hound after they drop it. It's going to be a really strong, a tough push for them to defend. In the balloon, it looks like it's going to get to the tower for at least one hit. One hit down, and Mega Minion does a good job cleaning up there, making sure he didn't take more damage. Now we have to defend. We have the E-Drag ready, and you're going to see the power defensively of the E-Drag here. That Chain Lightning is just so good, guys. I don't know about you guys, but just the E-Drag is such a good card. I feel like it's the best card they've added to the game in, in, in a long, long time. In recent memory, I'm trying to think of what I would say the strongest card they've added to the game before the E-Drag. I can't even think of it. I mean, obviously there was one, right? But E-Drag is just such a versatile and, and fun card to use and to play, and I just think it's so strong. So here we go, guys. Going to be in a, a double dragon push coming, and look at this again. I mean, look at E-Drag. He is going, the Chain Lightning is going through all three of the targets. Zap comes down to help out, but I'm not even sure he needed the Zap there. It's just a really tremendous value out of this E-Drag. And it, can he take care of that Mega? Yes, he can. This, these E-Drags, two E-Drags now, doing work there defensively. That was an awesome defensive sequence, and that really illustrated the power of the E-Drag there, guys. And now we have a Lava Hound and an E-Drag going into the lane. We're going to respond with a Mega Minion as well against that Inferno Dragon. Zap comes down. We get the Lava Hound to the tower. It's going to do a little bit of Lava Hound chip damage, I guess. Uh, very very, very little damage, obviously, from the Lava Hound, but, you know, sometimes when it gets to the tower there, it can do a surprising amount of, I guess, chip 
incidental chip damage. Now we have a lot behind the pocket coming at us, and of course, E-Drag is ready there on the defense, and uh, E-Drag is going to do a really great job. Look at a nice balloon play there, trying to take advantage and get extra value out of those guards that were left over from defending that miner, and we're not going to get the balloon to the tower, but we are going to get more death damage, taking the tower down to 712 HP. So just like that, things are looking really, really well uh, here for Bochum, but we only have a minute left in overtime. Fireball comes down. I think that's going to be GG there, guys. There it is. So I'm glad it wasn't a draw. All we need is one more fireball here, guys. Arrows comes down. Uh, pretty uh, nice fireball there by Criminal. He's staying alive, but it's pretty much over. I think we're, what, one card away at this point from... Uh, from another fireball or two cards away. Either way, it's, it's basically in Bochum's... Uh uh, he's got this. He's got this, guys. So here comes a fireball, and that's going to be GG. So, wow, five and a half uh, minute match. Maybe this will be a super long video, especially if we want to get to 7,000 trophies, guys. Oh, man. I'm going to go ahead and edit out any wait time, and I'll come back to you uh, when we find our next match, guys. All right, guys, it's time for match number two. Here we go into the match, and we're going against Noctis. I believe we faced him in a recent live ladder video. It's funny, uh, doing so much live ladder stuff, especially towards the end of the season here on the YouTube channel, we're starting to kind of, just like the pros, starting to get an idea of who plays what here. And he's starting out with guards in the back, all same lane. So could it be another mirror matchup or another Lava Hound matchup here? No, it doesn't look like it. We have a bowler starting in the left lane from the opponent here. So who knows at this point? Point exactly what they're playing. You, you see the guards, you see the bowler. I'm thinking maybe a little bit of off meta or potentially it could be a, a graveyard deck. So we'll see. There's the Ice Wiz. Maybe it's a Ice Wiz NATO tombstone deck because I feel like whenever you see Ice Wiz, you've got to be prepared for the tombstone and the NATO as well, right? So Lightning comes down there against the Lava Hound and the bowler actually gets to his left tower, guys. That could be trouble. Nice fireball there by Bochum. That's going to bring the baby dragon to the opposite lane. Hopefully these pups can do some damage. He's taking a lot. Ooh, that was a nice NATO too by Noctis. So things not starting out that well here for Bochum, but uh, not that big. It could be worse, right? I thought the bowler would get more damage onto that tower. Look at that heads up solo pro play balloon there by Bochum, realizing that the opponent had exhausted all of their air counters. No Ice Wiz, no baby dragon, and no NATO. I'm not sure if they had lightning back in cycle but either way they didn't end up using it if they did and we take the tower down so what looked like a precarious start there for Bochum guys ends up with a one tower uh, lead as we're about halfway through regulation here but we do have 505 damage on our left tower so this is an interesting deck that we're going against guys I definitely did not predict uh, this one coming right it's a bowler royal hogs and uh, NATO lightning deck interesting so you know the one thing is starting out with a lava hound there guys is is even when you have a lead, it, you're playing Lava Loon, it's obviously a beatdown deck, so although you're not going to be taking as much damage necessarily as a traditional Golem deck, you still want to stay on the offensive, because he's going to lose the tower here, I believe at least, yeah. The, 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 the pigs get to the tower, he's going to lose the tower. You want to stay, a good defense with Lava Loon is oftentimes a good offense, so it's not like 2.9 Expo that we showed yesterday on the channel. Definitely not, right? You want to stay the aggressor, even if you have the lead when playing Lava Loon. That's, it's obvious, an obvious point, to, um, I'm sure a lot of you guys, but it's an important point, so I just wanted to mention that. And again, we're going right into that left lane there with the Lava Hound at the bridge, trying to get some more value out of this E-Drag. Fireball comes down, Lightning comes down by the opponent. I wonder, with 20 seconds left, let's see how he plays this. He's going to keep supporting that push with an E-Drag this time. E-Drag's going to do actually a pretty good job with the Chain Lightning against those guards. He's going to three-shot those, and then he's going to move on to the bowler. So, tremendous value again out of this E-Drag, and we send in a balloon in the pocket. Zap comes down, and and the balloon is gonna oh I called it too early I thought the balloon was gonna get to the tower that was a nice last second NATO there by Noctis uh, but we do get a lot of damage on that left tower taking it down to 1207 HP and here we go again with the lava hound and the mega minion in tow and this could be I don't want to call it too soon this could be it but this is gonna be a fireball opportunity if I've ever seen one and there it goes fireball is gonna clean up very nicely there against those guards and the royal hogs and now again we have the e-drag down the lane interesting that he's using the e-drag down the lane here guys and he's delaying the opponent does have lightning in hand. I would I would uh, expect them to use it now. They do. And now we can use Balloon again, but he does actually have NATO in cycle. So actually a heads up play there by Bochum. Instead of just continuing to pressure, realizing that the opponent does have... Uh 
NATO and cycle. He just opts to just fireball cycle them out here. So 54 HP remaining. Zap's gonna do it. That's a quick 2 0 there by Bochum, guys. Really, really nice, really, really well played. And you can tell the Bochum loves that, uh, that E Wiz electric uh, or whatever it is emote. I, I like that one too. It's my favorite out of the E Wizzes. All right, guys, match number three, Tom. And we're going against Jumaji from Wham Esports, one of my favorite clans out there. And uh, Jumaji's a pretty solid movie, you know? The original, though. I haven't seen the new one. Have you guys? I don't know. <laughs> this <laughs> this video is brought to you by Jumaji. So here we go. It's going to be a Royal Ghost in the back. Royal Ghost getting a nerf tomorrow. A 9% HP nerf. By the time that you guys watch this, it will already be in game. Interesting if you guys want to leave me a comment or two and tell me what your first thoughts of the, the new meta is. Of course, in the future, I'm talking to you guys. I would love to hear what you guys think of it. Uh, I have a, a lot of great guests kind of lined up to bring you guys over the next week. So that ought to be uh, ought to be a lot of great new meta content. I'm really looking forward to seeing the Mega Knight personally and seeing what the Mega Knight can do now with that faster uh, hit speed. Uh, and the uh, the Skelly Barrel too being buffed, it tells me that maybe that deck, that kind of annoying Zap Bait deck might be viable again. Anyway, we'll see. Jumaji starts out with a... Uh, it's ooh, interesting. He's got the Poison, the Royal Hogs, and the uh, the Tombstone, Royal Ghost, and Hunter here. So it could potentially be a three Musketeer deck as well. I don't know. I'm having a hard time calling this deck, guys. Uh, but in, either way, he goes in with... It could just be a Royal Hogs uh, Magic... Uh, yeah, okay. So just a regular Magic Archer deck. And here we go. It's going to be a Fireball coming down. Nice Fireball value taking care of that Hunter and the Mega Minion. At least pushing that Hunter out of the way. Zap's going to finish everything off. And it looks like just like that, guys. We're going to take this left tower down. That was a nice Zap Fireball. Again, taking care of the Mega Minion and the Hunter there. Totally clearing out the lane for the Balloon to get to the tower. Tanked... Uh, being a nice tankage from that Lava Hound. So... Really well played, about uh, not even to double elixir time here, guys, and he already has a tower down. So let's see if he does what we said, guys, and stays uh, the aggressor. Of course, have to defend this first. We have the E-Drag ready, trying to avoid that poison, narrowly avoiding it in the early on, but now he's he's sitting in the poison there, and the Royal Ghost does look like he's going to get to the tower, but the E-Drag will still help out against that Royal Ghost. So 7 elixir, 8 elixir, 9 elixir, and we're going to drop that Lava Hound again, guys, in the right lane. Try to take this right tower down, while at the same time, hopefully defending and keeping our left tower alive but one thing that Bochum does is he is not afraid to tower trade with this deck and that's something again that at the risk of belaboring the point guys is something that you guys have to be comfortable with too you know if you're a golem player you'll naturally know how to play a good lava hound uh, be, be a good lava hound player but it, one of the big key elements guys is definitely being able to tower trade and being able to recognize I don't have an answer for what the opponent is going to throw at me right now so I better go aggressive in the opposite lane Jamaji just dropped in the wow thanks and uh i don't know i don't know if that was a uh I don't know if that was BM or whatnot, but that was actually a pretty solid play there by Bochum. It looks like he's going to go ahead and give the GG there, and yeah, that, that's going to be it, guys. Really, really nice match again against this Royal Hog deck here, guys. Royal Hog, another card that is going to be nerfed. So, guys, we are a quick, what, 3-0 and o here. Man, this might not be as long as a video as I initially had thought here, guys. I'll come back at you with match number four in just a sec. All right, guys, we are into match number four against Leaf. Fi or Leafy or something like that. Anyway, guys, last kind of note about the new meta, which I don't know what it is exactly, but I would just kind of caution all of you guys watching to uh, not overreact to balance changes. I think that we have a tendency, especially I think that you know annoying YouTubers like yours truly don't really help the case when we we react to balance changes. And and oftentimes I think that there's a big tendency to overreact to balance changes. Like oh, I use I use Magic Archer, so forget it. You know the cards dead and, and you know screw you supercell i think that oftentimes cards can still be viable so even if your your favorite card got nerfed give it some time see if you can still have success with that deck or that card before you overreact and look for a replacement so it looks like we're going against maybe a mirror matchup guys the first two cards out of the opponent here is the lava hound and then the mega minion and the e-drag we're gonna have a fireball coming down Ooh, just barely i thought we we're gonna lock onto that tower for at least one hit with a balloon but either way we have a nice defensive sequence here and it's not a mirror matchup considering that he is also also playing the minor a lot of minor lava hound decks going around and a lot of them not using balloon and using the e-drag as we can see here so it looks like again we're going against another this is what our, 
our second, our second or third uh, Lava Hound matchup, second. So two Royal Hogs and two Lava Hounds so far at the top of the ladder as we approach. And by the way, guys, I will check in after this match to see, uh, hopefully, hopefully I don't forget, after this match to see how far he is right now. I haven't done a, tro a trophy check uh, yet this video. So here we go. It's going to be a Guards and a Lava Hound push. Another really, really smart play there by Bochum. And that's why I wanted to show you this long video so we can see plays like that. Just recognizing that, hey, he just used his Bar Barrel. He used his Miner. And he's playing a Lava Hound deck, so he can't have that many ground uh, counters. So I'm just going to send in the guards, and he, he makes contact, takes down that tower with a Lava Hound guards push. Another great push there by Bochum as we do approach double elixir time. Now we have the defensive E-Drag, and we have the Mega Minion. We're just going to be able to clean up very nicely here, I think. Can we take down that flying machine? No, we can't. But Zap comes down. That's going to keep the tower alive, but just barely 169 HP remaining. Obviously, uh, the opponent here does have some sort of a big spell as their last card. So it could be lightning. It could be, uh, of course... Interesting. Do you think it's Zap, guys? Do you think it's... No, no, no. It's not Zap because you have Bar Barrel. So it's definitely either a Lightning or a Fireball out of the opponent. So definitely that left tower will go down. Doesn't even need a spell. The Miner's going to finish it off. And now we have to deal with the Lava Hound coming in the right lane. But you can see, again, just being very, very aggressive here is Bochum. He's going to go ahead and Fireball that Flying Machine. And then meanwhile, on the offensive side, we just barely miss getting to the tower there with the Balloon. But that death damage will be very, very nice. Doing some damage to the tower and also to the E-Drag. Now we have what? I am getting confused here. Who Who's E-Drag is who here? We have a, a pile of E-Drags in the left lane, but it looks like two E-Drags coming our way. Things are not looking that great here, guys. Poison comes down. Okay, last card was Poison, the one spell that we didn't mention, right? And uh, E-Drag's actually going to clean up against the two E-Drags very well, right? And now the Flying Machine does get to the tower. Uh-oh, guys. A nice zap to, to retarget the uh, the Flying Machine off of the Lava Hound. Just bit my lip. Way to go, Ash. <laughs> Did you see that? I was like, ah! All right. So now we have a Lava Hound and uh, a, a Balloon coming in right down down the center of the lane. A nice play there. That's going to take care of the tombstone and go right into the tower. Uh, Fireball comes down, taking care of that uh, Mega Minion, and we do get one hit onto the left tower uh, by that balloon, and then the death damage takes it down to 1362, as we're about 40, 45 seconds here into sudden death overtime. Again, Lava Hound versus Lava Hound right now. This is kind of crazy, guys. Tombstone planted right in the middle by the opponent, and then we have the guards there to take care of the tombstone this time. That's going to clear the way for the balloon. No distractions in hand. Remember, there's really not much the opponent has, except for the E-Drag and, of course, the tombstone to stop that balloon. I guess Mega Minion as well, but the balloon does get to the tower. That's going to be GG. Boom! Wow! All wins so far for Bochum. Man, this guy's a beast, and he gives the stomping emote, too, and he knows it. Let's go ahead and come back. At no, he's already in a match, guys. That was a fast match. We are in the next match, guys. And I forgot to check where he was on ladder. My bad, guys. I promise I'll do it after this one, after this match. So we're gonna go going against a guy here who I don't know who he is. That match actually really crept up on me, guys. I apologize about that. Going to start out with a real ghost. It was not a long wait time, and I forgot to check where he was in the leaderboards. I probably don't even need to edit that one. Either way, here it goes. A miner again coming on to the tombstone here by the opponent, trying to clear the way for that real ghost to get to the tower. And... Uh, the Three Musketeer matchup. This should be fun. Finally, we get to see something other than Royal Ghost and Lava Hound, right, guys? So the Fireball comes down, taking care of the two of the Musketeers, and now we have to just handle this one solo Musketeer, and we should be pretty good here. Uh, as far as, like, starting plays with this deck goes, guys, you know, we've covered Lava Hound and Lava Loon so much on the channel, I hesitate to even go over these really basic things, but I know there's actually a lot of people still uh, in my comments saying that I just downloaded the game, or, or you know, I started out a few months ago, and, and the channel's helped a lot watching all these pro players. So with that said, <clears throat> I think it's important to go over these basics. And the starting play with this deck was definitely going to be Tombstone, right? Tombstone is going to be your ideal starting play. And you can see here, really quickly, the opponent pumps up. So we're going to just pressure that opposite lane. Hunter comes down. Nice Hunter play by the opponent. Tough to get through the Hunter and Three Musketeers. Although we do have, of course, Fireball and Zap. And we use the Zap there, taking care of that Hunter. And we have a full health Lava Hound, or actually, excuse me, half health Lava Hound on that left tower and the Mega Minion in tow. But starting plays, guys, Tombstone is going to be your go-to starting play. If you don't have Tombstone, Tombstone in hand at the start of the match, I would just recommend not playing anything, honestly, guys, because and waiting for the opponent to make a move, because you really don't want to be splitting your guards or playing your guards at all uh, to start out a match. At least it's not something that I would recommend for you guys. And the main thing is because you get a really safeguard your guards, and no pun intended, and your tombstone in this deck, because that's all you have for ground distracting or ground 
targeting troops. So just to throw those away at the beginning of a match is a big mistake in my opinion. So Royal Ghost uh, gets to the left tower. That's going to be tower down here. The opponent opts to pump up again. Interesting pump decision by the opponent. This could be a, a very big push here by Bochum again. And he's going to make sure that he has his fireball, of course, in Zap in hand. So let's see. He can take care of these two musketeers right now, guys. He has seven elixir right now. Fireball comes down. Zap comes down. And that's definitely going to be tower down. The opponent knows it, so they're going to go really aggressive with the miner and the bandit. But I do think that was probably a mistake pump by the opponent. And he does lose his right tower. And Bochum's able to protect his right tower with 789 HP remaining. We do get one shot on that balloon onto the king tower. But remember, ah, 16 seconds left, 15 seconds left at this point, guys. I think this is another victory here for Bochum. I don't want to call it too early, but with 10 seconds left, he's doing a very good job defending there in the pocket. 8, 7, 6. We have tombstone in cycle. No, we have guard cycle. That's going to be GG again, guys. Very well played. Just narrowly missing out on that three crown there is Bochum. This guy is a beast. Man, he doesn't lose. This is awesome, man. All right. This time, I will remember to check where he is. Okay, he's at 6903. So we need like three more wins or so to get to 7,000. Four more wins to get to 7,000. So guys, I'll be right back with you guys in the next match. All right, guys, here we go into match number. I'm losing track, but you again from a star elite is going to be the opponent here, guys. So again, we're at 6,900, I think, in three trophies. So, well, I don't know, 369, maybe three or four more matches in this video. Yeah, it definitely is going to be a long one. It's just a lot of trophies, 200 trophies uh, with Lava Hound. And uh, yeah, hopefully he can get it. I mean, one loss might make the, the video, you know, way, way longer, right? So we'll see. Right now he's on an epic win streak. So we'll see how he does. And uh, it'll be interesting to see where he finishes the season because there's still going to be a few hours left uh, when I stop recording whether or not he does get to 7,000 trophies. So the zap does come down there against the Inferno Dragon. And again, we're actually going to get the balloon to that left tower. Nice, easy tower down right off the beginning and the very first push there by Bochum. And he's going against another lot. Lava Hound deck, another Lava Hound double dragon deck with the miner and the guards. We saw it before, guys, and it looks like he's going against it again. A nice fireball opportunity there. He does miss the Inferno Dragon, though. He has E-Drag ready, though. It doesn't really matter. Look at how E-Drag can just save the day like that. We don't have fireball. We don't have zap in hand. No big deal. We have the Electro Drag. That can reset and stun and clean up very, very nicely on defense. So as we approach a minute and 30 seconds remaining in this match, guys, dude, he already has it. He already kind of has it won, right? And I don't know. I mean, at this point, again, he can stay aggressive. He can probably drop that Lava Hound. I, I don't know if he's going to go for the King Tower here or for the Princess Tower. Uh, but I imagine he'll probably go same lane. Uh, maybe just defending here. He sets up with the Tombstone. Let's see what he plays next here, guys. 10 Elixir. I guess we're just going to leak a little bit. And then we cycle the guards. So dealing with this Lava Hound push, we're going to cycle the guards. That's going to do a good job distracting from the flying machine. Baby Dragon will lock onto those guards. That's going to give us a nice opportunity to fireball away that flying machine. And here comes the Electro or Inferno Dragon responded to by the Electro Dragon. And again, even against this swarm, look at Electro Dragon go, man. Mega Minion doing a good job distracting everything. The fireball comes down, but let's see. He's going to place a Lava Hound right there in front of the Inferno Dragon. And then the E-Drag will help out resetting that uh, Inferno inferno beam and it looks like again another victory here you don't be you don't beat bochum when you're playing lava hound i guess right i guess he knows basically everything that the opponents are going to throw at him being a lava hound god himself we do get to the tower there fireball is going to reset that inferno dragon another hit with a balloon taking it all the way down to 600 damage 500 145 hp remaining very very nicely done there a nice easier victory here uh by bochum he probably has fireball in hand probably get a two crown there uh, lead on the opponent. This guy is so good. I know I'm saying this at the end of every single replay here, guys, but this guy is so good. He gives the GG. Well played by you again, but tough to beat uh, the, the Lava Hound God at his own game, right, guys? All right, let's go ahead and, uh, and go into the next match, guys. We'll see how quickly we can get, hopefully, to 7,000 trophies. All right, guys, here we go. Next match against, I don't know who is uh, who this is, but we'll see. We'll see what deck they're running. About 10 seconds left to see how uh, see if he has Tombstone in his uh, starting hand. Looks like he doesn't, otherwise he'd be playing it. So just like I kind of said, guys, Bochum here is just going to wait for the opponent to make the first move, and they do so with the Bar Barrel. He's just going to go ahead and zap it away. That will hold that Barbarian to one swing on the right tower. And here comes the Royal Hogs again. It'll be interesting, like I like I mentioned earlier about the balance changes, it'll be interesting to see if the Royal Hogs still have a very, very high use rate. And this illustrates some of you, to some of you guys who might not run in 
into a lot of royal hogs on your ladder range this is they're everywhere at the top of ladder they're everywhere at tournament level standard sometimes we can just look at the game and just think through our own little window right we can only see a little bit of what's outside our window but if you look at the entire game right now royal hogs definitely probably needed a a, a nerf you know uh so anyway an e-drag going into the lava hound here let's see what we do to respawn we're at 10 elixir so it did, we don't have like anything good to to, uh, to support. We wanted to make sure that Inferno Drag turned around first. That's why we delayed a little bit there. And now we're going to be able to take down the E-Drag. We're going to fireball away that Magic Archer. Poison comes down from the opponent. But we're going to get to the tower. And that might be tower down. It is again. No, not tower down. I spoke too soon. But we can take it all the way down to 725 damage. We zapped that uh, Royal Ghost. And fireball might already... No, we just used the fireball on offense. Excuse me. But the Tombstone's going to do a pretty nice job now tombstone will be getting a nerf too uh tomorrow but i wouldn't worry too much about the tombstone guys i think the tombstone is still going to be a great card especially free to play friendly because the level doesn't really matter that much on tombstone it's the same thing with every skeleton based card for the most part so royal ghost solo down the lane that's going to get the guards out of bochum's hand basically that was kind of a bait move by the opponent to get the guards out of cycle and then we're going to reload with the lava hound let's see what the opponent does here we have the tombstone setting up for the opponent, this is going to be tough to kind of break through in this situation. At least I feel that way. He's going to have the E-Drag ready as well and the Hunter. So, yeah, definitely tough to break through. We have the E-Drag separated nicely going right into that Tombstone trying to avoid the poison. And we do. The E-Drag is not taking poison damage. Now he is a little bit, but he avoided it for a while. Fireball comes down. A really textbook offensive sequence there. And the Zap takes care of that E-Drag. And another victory, maybe. I, I don't want to call it too early again here, guys. But it's looking like another victory here for Bochum with 15 seconds left uh, about now. So here comes the big push. It's going to be we need to have that fireball back in cycle here. And we do. We cycle back to the fireball. That's going to finish things off. And now with 8 seconds left I think it's safe to say another GG there by Bochum the opponent. None too happy about it. And there we go. Another victory. Bochum said he loves this deck and you can see why. He's dominating with it guys. Let's go ahead and uh, let's check to see where he is on the uh in the leaderboard here currently at 6966 so maybe if we get a big trophy offer we can get it on the next match if we can win again here we go guys actually he's in a match already wow that was a fast one against b normal who is usually a mortar player uh from nova esports so let's see what he's running usually he has mortar hog or and there it is right off the bat it's mortar so It'll be interesting. I'm glad we're going against being normal because he's a really, really good mortar player. And furthermore, I, I would really love a textbook on how to handle a mortar matchup uh, for a Lava Loon player. So here we go. It's going to be a Mega Minion taking care of that mortar. We do take a couple hits from the mortar onto the left tower, but we're able to set up with a tombstone there. And we know exactly, obviously, Bochum, as soon as he saw his name, was knowing exactly what he was playing. But now he's able to kind of establish his cycle. We're taking a lot of minor chip damage on that left tower. But you can see, again, using the tower's... Uh, HP as a resource is something very important in any beatdown deck. Look at this opposite lane Inferno, Electro Drag, excuse me. That's going to stop the Prince from being able to charge onto the tower, but we still do take a ton of damage. We do have a nice Elixir lead, considering we have a lot of Elixir already on the arena. So let's see if we can just take this tower right now. He's probably got... What does he have? Does he... Okay, Fireball comes down, but... That's not, this might be towered. Okay, uh, Minion Horde. I forgot. So yeah, Minion Horde is going to clean up very, very nicely there. Interesting Balloon going right into the Minion Horde. That was a really solid Balloon there, guys. And the Mortar is just a second too late. Oh, no. The Balloon gets to the tower. Oh, no, for B Normal. Oh, really awesome for us. The Death Damage will not get onto the Mortar. So we will take... We'll have to Fireball that Mortar away. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a great response. And we do a ton of damage to our opposite uh, tower. We are sitting at 600 one HP left on our left tower too so I wonder how high B normal is in trophies right now I wonder if it's enough to get to 7,000 trophies with a victory here we'll see it's going to be guards doing a good job uh, distracting those spear goblins and goblins from the gang perfectly which is a sliver of HP left on that last guard cleaning up very nicely now setting uh, up the 
defensive uh, tombstone there. The fireball comes down and immediately we're going in with the Lava Hound again here. So we are definitely in the driver's seat, but it's far from a victory so far. A Prince going solo down the right lane. We're not even going to mess around. We're just going to E-drag immediately. And uh, we might take a hit or two from the Prince, but we won't take a charge hit. So we can basically just kind of ignore him from here on out. The Mortar comes down. It's going to get one hit. That's a one hit is enough there. Tower goes down. But now look at this. Oh, the predictive fireball. We missed a few of the minions there, but we do oh, only get one hit. Uh, that was too bad. I thought we were going to take uh, get two hits with that balloon there on the tower, but either way, the E-drag in the pocket there for Bochum is going to bleed away that left tower's HP. We're able to defend with guards against the miner in our lane, and that's going to be GG there, guys. Fireball comes down, but with eight seconds left in this match, there's nothing that B-normal can do here, guys. So let's see if this gets him to 7,000 trophies, and we can call it a video, guys. Guys, let's see. I told Bochum already, if you keep winning, just stop at 7,000. And I can't believe that he hasn't lost, guys. This is crazy. All right, let's check on him here. We are at... No! Oh, that wrong guy. 6,995 trophies. Ah, oh, five away. Oh, man. All right, so we got to do one more match. Or maybe two more. Let's go. All right, guys, here we go. Maybe against PUBG. Maybe the last match of the video. This is an epic, epic win streak. I could not have wished or hoped for this video to go any better at this point, guys. And again, starting out with the Royal Ghost in the back is PUBG. I don't know what deck he's running, but it should be a good matchup. PUBG, a really, really whoever is uh I, I think that he finished like top five or, or top ten last season or the season before. I don't know. Kind of a foggy memory. All these seasons kind of bleed together. But either way, the Royal Ghost does make a connection to that left tower so not the start necessarily that Bochum wanted he does take about a thousand damage almost onto that left tower he's going to fireball that e-wiz away and the chain lightning is going to take care of these zappies and the e-wiz here from the e-drag so it's a pekka deck interesting so it's like a pekka split lane push deck maybe with uh potentially it could be like a battle ram deck or it could even be something crazy like three muskies but i, I don't think so it's probably like a battle ram uh control type deck with a zappies so pekka goes down uh left lane we have dark goblin as well dark goblin also receiving a buff tomorrow and royal ghost coming this could be trouble defensively here uh mega minion doing a good job against that pekka but we might end up ooh, nice guards the very last second there and hey that could be trouble for a regular player but i guess bochum had it handled and i uh, i should know by now right he's got that on lockdown we do a little bit of damage to the left tower taking it down to 2954 unfortunately we don't get a mega minion hit but we do get a guard stab on that left tower so with about a minute and 23 22 21 20 seconds left both players are kind of reloading at this point and we will see going into double elixir time if bojum can make something happen he's just gonna zap cycle there on the left tower now it's 27 42 and a pekka reloaded by the opponent here it looks like bojum's probably gonna go ahead and tombstone and then maybe lava hound uh same lane as that pekka we'll see so 10 elixir drops the lava hound pekka coming down the lane now, E-Wiz, you can just see, even that last matchup against the Prince guys, I mean, E, not E-Wiz, E-Drag, just so good against anything charging. And uh, here we go, it's going to be a Balloon, a Pekka Loon deck, man. I did not call this one. That's crazy. So a P.E.K.K.A. Loon deck. We're able to defend really, really well here, though. Guards taking care of the P.E.K.K.A. Tombstone taking care of the Balloon. And now we're getting a nice fireball opportunity. Another Lava Hound uh, reloaded in front of that E-Drag. Mega Minion doing work against that Royal Ghost. Zap comes down. And here comes Fireball. He's going to opt to Fireball. The Dark Goblin and the Zappies there will deal with the two E-Wizzes because we got two E-Drags. And uh, look at the Chain Lightning going through all of those Zappies and and the zap comes down against the zappies as well. A nice fireball there by PUBG. Able to uh, really stop what could have been a winning push there. And he, he gives the electric, uh, the electric, what do you call that? The electrocution e-wiz, I guess, emote. And here it comes, a P.E.K.K.A. down the lane. Now, a P.E.K.K.A. Royal Ghost opposite lane push here. We're going to have to really focus on defending as he has a Dark Goblin as well. PUBG definitely going all in here, trying to do a do or die push. Now, we need to fireball those zappies, but we have to defend first. So the fireball comes down on defense for PUBG. A nice sequence. Now we're going to go in with the lava, with the, the balloon, excuse me, in the left lane. He has Ewiz in cycle. There it is. Ewiz comes down. Fireball comes down. Balloon's going to get to the tower. And there it is, guys. He did it. 
7,000 trophies and we did it all live for you guys. Man, Bochum is a beast. And uh, guys, uh, here we go. He's at 7,019 trophies. He did it. Thank you so much, Bochum, guys. Check out his player stats and information in the description below. Thanks to StatsReal.com along with his social media. And uh, just a pleasure watching Bochum for what? Like, 40 minutes, 35 minutes at this point, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of this long kind of format video, just watching a really, really good pro play the deck that they are a master at. Let me know what you think in the comments below, guys. Thank you so much for watching. A huge shout out to Bren Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out his information in the description below as well. He does giveaways and, and tournaments and all kinds of awesome stuff on Twitter. So show Bren some love, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, take care, guys.